Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so the next program in chapter five is uh, stadium seating. All right, so there are three seating categories at the stadium. For a softball game, class A seats cost $20, class B seats cost $15, and class C seats cost $10. Write a program that asks how many tickets for each class of seats were sold, and then displays the amount of income generated for, from ticket sales. So. In a stadium, class A seats cost $20, class B seats cost $15, class C seats cost 20, 10 Basically, calculate um, how many people bought the class A tickets, calculate, the, calculate the, the, the sales, same for class B, same for class C, and then display the total amount of income generated from all the, all the ticket sales. All right, so we, since chapter 5 is all about functions, we're going to go ahead and create functions for e each of these indiv individual tasks. Right. So the first thing we're going to do is create the function to calculate the um, ticket sales for class A seat. So let's go ahead and, and create the function. I'm going to go ahead and define the function. I'm going to go ahead and call it, it's going to be a long name, but it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Calculate class A ticket sales, ticket sales, all right. So the class A ticket sales is it's going to need an argument, which is going to be um, how many tickets how many tickets were were bought for um how many class A tickets were bought, right? So I'm going to define a parameter for that and call it class A ticket bought. Class A tickets bought here. Uh, that's how it spells, right? Yeah. And then in the function itself, we just uh, we are going to multiply because it's we've been told that class A seats cost twenty dollars. So all we are going to do to calculate the sale for class A, the class A sales, okay, the class A seat sales is to basically multiply how many tickets were bought, which is class A tickets bought by 20. Okay, so class A ticket bought here. Oops, my typing is not good. Class A tickets bought times 20 is going to be our sales for class A tickets um, you know basically a class A sales class A seat sales all right so I'm this is going to give us to say the sales for class A the seat so I'm going to basically create a variable that's going to store that so I'm going to say class A sales I'm just going to create a variable called class A sales which is going to hold our sales for class A and then go ahead and return it once I'm done calculating it I want to go ahead and return class A sales and then I'm done with calculating class A ticket sales. The same, it's going to be the same thing for class B and class C. The only thing that's going to change is the price of the ticket for each class. So I'm going to basically define another class called your calculate, calculate class B ticket sales and then changes to class B tickets bought, changes to class B sales, changes to class, basically just change, change things around, changes to class B tickets bought times not 20 but because it said class b seats cost 15 dollars so times 15. And then when you're done return class b sales so the same thing for class c now we only define the functions we're not even we're not calling them yet so yeah and then changes to class c class c class a tickets uh, class c tickets bought class c sales and then class C tickets bought times, not 20, but then the price for class C is class C seats cost $10, so times 10. We are done return class C sales. All right, so now with these functions, we can basically calculate the sales for each class, each uh, seat class. So I'm going to go ahead and define a main method also where we are going to basically write our uh, create our program the main method is the function that is supposed to be called okay when your program starts It's the first function that's supposed to be called when the, when your program starts so I'm going to define main and write our program in there that's going to test these functions and then when I'm done I'll call the function main which is going to basically run our program because our, all our programs it's going to all the code for our program is going to be here these are just functions defined the code in the main function is going to use some of these functions defined here so remember we are just defining main we haven't called it yet so nothing is going to happen until we call it so what I want to do in the main function is 
let's ask the user for how many tickets were bought for class A, All right? So let's go ahead and use the input function, okay, to ask the user for how many tickets were bought for class A. For, cla for, cla for class A. And now the input function always returns a string, no matter what. Even if, even if the user types in a number, that number is going to be returned as a string. That's how the input function works. But we can't use strings in calculations. So we have to go ahead and convert, convert that string that is being returned to a number because we want a number. When you think about it, the user is going to type in the number, a number of tickets that, that were bought for class A. But the input function always returns a string. So we need to convert what is being returned to a number. And the way to do this, in this case, we want an integer because that's it's just going to be a number of tickets, 5 or 10 or 15 or 20. So I'm going to call the int function and surround everything that is returned from the input function with parentheses. Basically, I'm converting everything that a user has typed to an int integer. And then I want to store it in a variable that I haven't declared yet. But I want to store it in a variable called, let's say, um, class A, class A um, ticket bot. It doesn't matter if this name is equal to or is the same as this name here. These, this is a function. The scope of this variable is only within this function. The, this is also another function. These two functions, they don't see each other. Actually, all these functions don't see each other. The variables you declared here, they work in the, the scope of that variable is in, in the function. The, you know, so these functions don't see each, see each other. These two names are considered different because they are in two separate functions. All right, so class A tickets bought, it's going to be called to the, whatever it is it typed, converted to an integer, right? Now, I don't want to bypass this line here. This line is like a guideline to try to help me write 80 characters on a line. It's, a, it's like a Python standard to do that. So I'm going to stick with that, and I'm going to break this line into two so that I don't, I don't exceed this line. Um, I'm going to close the string, concatenate it with the beginning of the string, and then before I break it, I'm going to type in a backslash and hit enter. Before you break any line in Python, you have to type in the backslash and hit enter. So that's what I've done here. And now it's broken into two lines. Same line, but it's broken into two lines. It's still working the same th same way. All right. So now I'm going to do the same thing for class B tickets bought and class C tickets bought. So I'm going to just going to paste this here, paste this here. So I don't actually have to close. That we can see so um, class B tickets bought class C tickets bought just changes to uh, oops a B <laughs> sorry class A class B class C tickets bought all right so that's fine all right so now we'll have everything stored here by the time it gets to this point now all we have to do is call the functions and then calculate the, the tickets bought right so we know that, I mean, and calculate the sales, the sales for these seats, these, these different classes. We know that the cal calculate, um, calculate class A ticket sales is going to basically return the sales for, um, for, for class A seats based on how many tickets were bought, right? So we have to create a variable to get or basically store that return value. So when I call the calculate ticket, calculate class A ticket sales function here. I need to pass in the class A tickets bought here. And that's going to return the class A sales. So I'm going to also create a variable called class A sales. Again, these names are the same, but then they are, because they're in two different functions, they're considered two different things. You can, they don't see each other. You can define the same variable in, in the same function. That's bad because, you know, but then this is considered a different function, so they don't see each other. I mean, they are considered two different variables because they are in two different functions, all right? So just like I explained um, with these. All right, so class A sales is going to be, we call the function and then we give it the number of tickets, it multiplies with the price and then returns the sales. I'm going to do the same thing for class B sales and then class C sales. Okay, so class B sales is going to be called to class B ticket sales, I'm calling that function and then pass in class B tickets bought. And then class C sales is going to be called to calculate class C ticket sales and then class 
C tickets bought. All right. So now we have all the all the sales. All we have to do is add them all, all the add them all up together, and then display it. Now you can go ahead and create a function for it. Actually, as a matter of fact, let's let's just do that. Let's do, let's create a function that's going to basically add them all together. So let's define a function that and call it um, calculate total sales. Calculate total sales and calculate total sales is going to need three arguments. It's going to need the, the, the sales for class A, sales for class B, and then sales for class C. So let's just define parameters for those. So class A sales, class B sales, and then class C sales. It's going to need those. And once it has those, all, all it's going to do is add them all up together. So I'm just going to just copy this whole thing. Add them all up together. And adding them, adding them all up together is basically the, it's go, going to give you the total sales, right? So we need a variable in this function that's going to store the total sales this way. Yeah, same thing. Okay. And then once we have calculated calculated the total sales, we want to go ahead and return it. Return the total sales. All right. So in order to basically what we call this function and use it, I'm going to yeah, I'm going to call it calculate. Let me just copy and paste this. Calculate total sales, and it's going to need all the sales for all the three sales. So class A sales, which I have here. Oops. Class B sales, which I have here. And then class C sales, which I have here. All right, so now we know this function is going to return the total sales. So I, I'm going to create another variable called total sales in main. Now these again are two different variables because they are in two different functions. This is the total sales in main, and this is the total sales in calculate total sales. They don't see each other; they are considered two different things because they are in two different functions. All right. Now, so total sales is going to hold the total sales of it's all, basically all the three scores added together. Okay. So now all I have to do is just display it, all right? Because the program said over here. Um, so write a program that asks how many tickets for each class of seats uh, were sold, and then displays the amount of the income generated for from ticket sales. All right, so let's go ahead and um, display it. Now we can also create another function that's going to display um, display the just go ahead and display the the result because since chapter five is all about functions, let's go ahead and do that. Let's uh, let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to define another function here called print details or basically print sales report sales report and sales report is going to need the class A sales so it's going to need class A sales right it's going to need class B sales class so these are parameter parameters I'm defining I could call them anything but I'm just calling them you know these names I could, I could call them anything. Whatever you, when you call this function, whatever you pass in as argument is going to replace these uh, parameters. So it's going to also need class C sales, and then it's also going to need a total sales, so it can print all. All it's doing is printing out the details. It's not doing anything, just printing out. It's not calculating anything, just printing out the details. Okay, so now we want, what we want to do in this function is print out the details this way. I'm going to, um, the first argument I'm going to pass into the print function is going to be the class A sales. So, so I'm going to create a string here and say class A sales. And that's going to be, you know, that's going to be called to the concatenated version. So, so I'm going to concatenate the string to, sorry, I, I, did I say concatenated version? I mean, I meant formatted version. All right, so calculate, sorry, ca class A sales is going to be concatenated with the form uh, formatted version of class A sales, which is going to be passed into us when this function is called. All right, so the format function takes two arguments. It takes what you want to format and how you want it formatted. Now, this is a format specifier. You specify how you want this class A sales formatted because the class A sales is going to be a monetary value, right? And it's going to be a float. It can be $25.2, $30, or just 50 point something because it can be a decimal like a float a floating point value I'm typing F meaning I want it formatted as an as a float 
Also, I want to round it to two decimal places, so I'm going to type in 0.2 in front of it. 0.2 is the precision. I want, to, I want that number rounded to two decimal places. If I wanted to round it, round it to three decimal places, I would type in 0.3 this way. Now, I want to round it to, round it to two decimal places, so I'll type in 0.2. And also, since it's a monetary value, I want it to be displayed with commas where necessary. So put commas where necessary. If it, it, the, the sales is, let's say, $1, $1 million, automatically put commas as in, let it read 1, 000, 000, 000. Automatically put the commas where necessary. So the way I do that is I type in a comma right in front of the position before the type. All right, so comma here, and then 0 0.2, and then F. Okay, the comma first, the position, and then the type. All right, so this is my format specifier. This is how I want this class A variable formatted. Okay, 